several times in each chapter we see how helpless krishna is we find weakness lording over strength exactly because it is weak shrimad bhagavad gita is an epic struggle and krishna is the struggler it 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 all tugs at your heart strings it's actually a song as much of melancholy as of wisdom that's the reason i love the gita Uh, greetings, sir. Anam here. Thank you for joining us today, sir. Uh, so my question to you is that in a lot of your talks and even now, uh, you redirect our focus towards ourselves as living beings, and as living beings, all of us seek contentment and happiness. So my question to you is, how does one be content without being complacent? How does one achieve that contentment without complacency, without becoming complacent? See, complacency can be there only when you have just not uh, bothered to inquire into the facts of your life. Otherwise, it is impossible to be smug and ultra confident about your state. None of us, factually, are in a great state internally. it's an unfortunate fact but a fact is a fact so so there is sickness and there is incompleteness and there is dissatisfaction and 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 there is psychosis and and we are anxious and we are afraid and when the when the placement season comes then we are jittery and when when the next fellow gets a higher pay package uh, then we are jealous and we know all these things are there and knowing all these things if we still certify ourselves to be internally healthy hmm, then there is something very wrong with uh, our uh, compass of honesty no either that or we are so afraid that we just do not even want to inquire within am i okay why did i just start trembling i mean standing in front of that interview room hmm? let's say it's a day zero company and and and, and i suddenly find myself uh, weak in the knees and uh, shaking in my trousers why is that happening and it's a very real happening it's actually physical you can't even say that it was inside so i didn't see it is there in the body you cannot deny its presence but having seen all that if we still want to insist that we are happy and this and that then there is a great problem hmm? now coming to contentment contentment is just the very last thing at your stage in life as a young person you should have a lot of dissatisfaction lot of dissatisfaction because if you settle at the point you already are inwardly outwardly within without then you would be settling at a very suboptimal point your potential is far higher so there is no point talking of contentment at this stage because being what we are at this age and stage we do not even know what contentment is so we are bound to misinterpret it so leave contentment for a for a later stage at this point rebel and rise see what confines you and do not accept it you getting it fight it out and do not bother too much for the result if you have given a good fight then the word contentment can probably kick in 
in the sense i did the utmost i could beyond this it was it was not possible for me to do anything honestly i say that there is nothing that i held back i gave the fight more than what i had now you can probably be contented but contented not in the sense that the fight is over contented in the sense that now you are ready for the next and bigger fight right final contentment is final deliverance it is liberation actually so do not talk of that when i talk to young people it is it is much more advisable that they look at things and they challenge them they question them and believe me and you need not actually believe me you see this thing with your own eyes much in the world today needs to be challenged and demolished do not be easily satisfied just do not be easily satisfied hmm? thank you sir sir and there is a follow up question which i already had and you touched upon that topic about the outcome not bothering more about the outcome however sir we are actually driven we are living in this outcome driven world goal oriented outcome driven world so how does one achieve that detachment of giving their best while at the same time not focusing much on the results no no it is not it is not detachment really i would say you have to be in love with your with your with your war hmm? your action hmm? if you are challenging uh, something if you have taken up an enormous project be in love with it hmm? i'm not talking of detachment you see i'm talking of love here be in love with it and give it just everything that you have for that you would first of all require the work to be that enormous and that lovable in anything that you enter in anything that you take up the the quality of relationship must be so high that you are that you are encouraged to that you are you are you are left choiceless in that regard you cannot hold yourself back you will not say now it is 6 pm so i must get up from my seat and leave or that in this task i was supposed to contribute only so much and no more give it all that you have and once you have given it all that you have you will find that you will be left with very little time space or energy to bother about the result see bothering about the result is an energy intensive affair is it not you may take 3 hours just preparing for an exam and then you may keep worrying about the result for 30 days worrying brooding thinking about the result all this consumes a lot of our lives now if you are worrying about the outcome i would say why do you have spare time at all why has this time firstly not been utilized in the action itself and if you would say well the deed is done now i have spare time i'll say then what about the next and the higher deed why are you squandering away even one one moment of this uh, precious but limited life how come you have the the time right so when one is madly in love when one is intensely in action then outcome becomes immaterial not because one is indifferent or detached no it is not a case of detachment it is a case of intense love i gave everything that i had now it is difficult to differentiate between uh, defeat and victory you could say the the one who could differentiate between these two the one who could be affected by the outcome is left with nothing to be affected with he held back nothing he gave everything that he she had 
You see, think, think of think of a six-hour Wimbledon final. Think of a six-hour Wimbledon final, huh? Or a seven-hour match. We have had matches like that, right? The loser, believe me, does not really regret that match. I have read of champions, Grand Slam champions, who when asked about their most unforgettable match, would not talk about one of their Grand Slam finals or semi-finals. They would talk about one match that they fought and lost. Now, that is one match that, that they cannot forget. That is one match that, that brought life to them as never before. Because that was the thing that drained everything out of them. And finally, when the winning shot was played, neither side could differentiate between victory and defeat. As a spectator, you would mind who held the trophy, no? And only one of the two parties is now carrying the trophy. So you would say, oh, well, Nadal won and Federer lost. But ask them who have just, uh, you know, played a five-setter that extended up to six hours, seven hours. Ask them and they, they say, well, this is my most unforgettable match. I do not remember who won and who lost. That is something I won't remember. And the match I cannot forget. That's the way to live life. Live it so intensely that in the end, you are left with no energy to be concerned with the result. And that does not mean that you will necessarily meet defeat. Sometimes there is victory, sometimes there is defeat. But that is not the point. The point is how you have played the game and play it with all your might. It, it raises you like anything. It raises you to, to enter a bigger game, a higher game. And that's the game.